Hey guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you get to watch me create a piece called uh, Wisdom's Creature. And this was actually a commission uh, for a very awesome artist that uh, Klee and I both consider family. And uh, yeah, so I was a little bit nervous because he's a really, really awesome artist. I am happy to say that at the end of this, you'll see the piece and he saw the piece and he absolutely loved it. This particular podcast, Klee and I are talking about something that we were talking in the studio about, which has a lot to do with just maintaining your fun as uh, you traverse this crazy thing called an art career. So uh, without further ado, enjoy the podcast. Random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi. And Klee. And today I want to talk about a conversation that Klee and I were having about your motivations in the studio and just staying childlike when it comes to uh, what you do in business and kind of like the perspective that comes along with that. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about or that we were talking about today was the fact that a lot of times we can easily tend to take what we do, the business side of what we do, and make it into a very, very serious affair. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because well, for a lot of becauses, which yeah. we'll get into. Yeah. And like, you know, and, and that's not to say that what we do as artists is not important. I, I think a lot of people uh, mistake the idea that if something is important, that you have to take it seriously, that it has to be like this important, serious thing. Because, you know, it's almost like you're watching a kid play an adult. And when you tell like a, a five-year-old, like, you're going to be a fireman or you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be like your dad working or whatever, they make this like super serious face and they're like, Rrr, and they're not having fun anymore. <laughs> I'm an adult. Yeah, I'm an adult. And I feel like a lot of times, especially when it comes to having a career as an artist, it's very, very easy to think like taxes are serious. Uh, running your business is serious. Building uh, a website is serious. Yeah, building a website is serious. You know, sales, sales, learning sales and learning marketing, all of that stuff is very, very serious. And what I've what I've really come to determine, what both of us have really come to determine in the last 10 years of doing this is that, in all honesty, the stress of the seriousness that comes with all that stuff, um, at, at least what we believe comes with all that stuff, tends to really uh, cause it to not work out the way that you want it to work out. That in, if it, in actuality, we were just free-flowing free and creating and having a good time in the studio, whether or not we were doing videos or we're doing artwork, jewelry, music, whatever it is that we're doing, and we were sharing it out there into the world with out the expectations, the serious expectations of needing to be taken seriously, that we would get a lot more content out there and have a lot more fun doing it, which is completely and utterly attractive to anyone that would view what it is that we do. Yeah. So basically, like we're taught, right, that if you want to be successful, that you have to take what you do seriously that you have to like do the hustle and grind or whatever, whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever you words get, they say. The hustle and grind. You got to hustle. You got to grind. You got to like put in your time and it's a rite of passage and whatever. But it's entirely up to you if you're having fun or not. So like we were talking about how like doing taxes, you know, like you sit down to do taxes and you're like, this sucks. This is right. tedious. And we pose the question like, well, why does it suck? Right. Why can't it just be fun? Well, because it takes time and because if you don't do it right, you could get in trouble and because uh, you have to like learn stuff and do math. And Rafi brought up the point, well, like, why isn't math fun? Like some people love math. Yeah, some people do. Ma they do Sudoku. They do different math equations just for fun. Right. And and so the and then, well, it takes time. And I realized that, OK, well, I'll everything takes time right the only reason that would be a stress factor is if 
well, it's taking time away from this, this, and this that I need to be doing, and I can't let it spill over into tomorrow, because tomorrow I have this, this, and this planned out, and if I don't get those things done, then it spills over into next week, but next week I have this other project that I'm doing, and then my whole timeline is thrown off, Yeah. right? So then you find yourself stressed out about doing this thing. Because you're thinking way out in advance and you're thinking, I could get in trouble. I could let these people down if I don't stay on task. Today, we uh, had a recording schedule set up for ourselves. And instead, we had a conversation with each other for like three hours. Right. Where where we talked about basically this, this. subject. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm doing domestic things like laundry. And I was like, well, I got to I gotta stop and go check our laundry. And uh, now it's this time. And we should probably get started on the podcasting if we're going to stay on schedule with it. And then we looked at that and investigated that whole thing that we do in our heads where you're like in the moment or you're trying to be in the moment, but you're not because there's all this background chatter of like, yeah, but you said that you were going to record these podcasts today, and here you are just talking to your person. Right. And it's hilarious because it's those moments, those moments where you start to realize that, like, here I am, I've got this career. This is what I do for a living. I basically, I paint on canvas or whatever surface it is that I'm painting on. I create sculptures. I do videos on YouTube. Uh, we we record this podcast. Uh, we do music. You do jewelry. There, there's all these things that we do that are completely and utterly creative, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like you grow up uh, on this foundation that there is a separation between play and work. Definitely, right? So the creative things that we do. Whether we're, we're create, you know, working on this podcast or whatever, because this podcast is essentially you and I sitting down, having a conversation, talking about a certain subject, and giving our opinion. Mm -hmm. And you, th this is play. This is what we do for fun. We we love having these conversations. We love talking about different subjects. We love talking about being artists. So, like, this essentially is fun for us. Working on a painting, that's fun. Working on your jewelry, working on your music, working on whatever it is that you're working on in the studio. We call it work, but it's essentially fun. Right. Right? So what is it about the separation of work and fun that causes us to bring the stress factor, the work factor into it? Money. Like, yeah, money. Money, exactly. Right? Right. The irony there, and something that was based on the conversation that we had, was that your productivity is affected by the amount of stress that you have. So the more stress you have, the less creative productivity you have. Mm -hmm, totally. Which absolutely is a direct reflection on how much money you make, because the less productivity you have the less money you make. It's totally counterproductive to take it seriously and be stressed out. And yet there's like this innate desire when money is tied into it to make it work instead of play. It's like you have to justify the fact that you're earning money by making it into this thing where you're serious and you're working. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of that has to do with our parents, you know, like the justification to our parents. I yes. think about, I think about my, my dad, for example, and my dad is great. I love my dad. And I think about the fact that when it came to being an artist, it, I didn't feel like I was being taken seriously by my dad until I was able to proclaim that like, well, I'm making a living from this. Right. And then once you were making a living, you were able to say things like, well, I'm very busy right now working. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. When he was like, hey, do you want to go and do this thing? I was like, well, I'm working. I'm working my job. This is this is what I do for a living. Like, don't don't mess with that. You know, like it was it's like you go a little bit above and beyond to try and explain to people that maybe do not understand what it does mean to be an artist in their language of serious work. Mm -hmm. So like, and at some point you start to buy into it yourself and you think that this thing that we do that is completely about self-expression. And yes, you could struggle with a piece of art. 
You could struggle with a piece of music. You could struggle with a piece of jewelry. You have, we have these innate struggles that have to do everything with the piece itself and wrestling back and forth with the piece before it becomes a reality. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the stress of the work world in society. Yeah, and we're talking about time and we're talking about time as currency. We're talking about how you spend the currency that is time and how right. that translates into the money that you think you deserve is basically it. And it's funny because there's this double-edged blade because what you're doing is something that is creative and fun. Mm -hmm. It's what you're doing because you enjoy it. And it's almost like in society, we're taught that your job is supposed to be a soul-sucking thing. Otherwise, you don't deserve to make money for it. Exactly. So then when you decide to do this thing as a career artist, it's almost like you have to institute those rules because if you're not instituting those rules, then you're just being flaky. You're not taking yourself seriously. And you're never going to make it. Right, exactly. And that's even reflected out in society with, with people that respond to us finding out that we're artists. Here we are. We've been doing this for 10 years. This is our business. This is our career. And yet somebody will meet us and say, oh, you're an, art an artist. Like, yeah, but, but how do you actually make money? Yeah, there's what's, like this disconnect. What's, yeah, what's your real job? Because What's the thing you have to do every day that you don't want to do before you could go do the art? And we're like, no, no, no. No, this is <laughs> this is what we do for a living. So, but but so then if I were to be brutally honest about what happens in my head in that moment, I would say, but I've set up protocols in place for myself to make it feel like a job such that I have to check emails and do financials and admin work in the morning and I tell myself I don't like it so that I can feel like I'm working. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. When I yes, I have to do those things i don't have to do those things i choose to do those things but i could enjoy them right they're not, they're not that hard no i mean and nothing that we do is hard it, it makes me think of the podcast that we listen to or the video that we listen to about uh jobs out there like mm -hmm. meaningless jobs oh yeah bs jobs bs jobs that people have you know where like they're working in a in in some firm as a, a project. An efficiency specialist. Yeah, exactly. An efficiency specialist for a project. And they actually don't do anything or what they do. Uh, the, the people that are in charge of them don't actually pay attention to any of the stuff that they put out there. And like that there's so many of these jobs that in corporate America, like you fall into that are supposed to be stressful so the reason that they have them set up the way they are is because if you are working, you're supposed to not like your job. Yeah. And that's not to say that everybody hates their job. Like a lot of people do stuff that they love doing. But it's interesting to me because there's always some kind of outside factor when you're working for someone else that causes you to not like every single aspect of your job. And I feel that when you are a creative and you work for yourself, you set up those standards based on the criteria, not of your own, not of what you want, but of what other people might expect from you. I, I think about one of our friends who is a jeweler and she's an artist and she opened up a brick and mortar location uh, basically along the lines of like being able to say like, well, I have a real business mom and then joining like certain things in town, like, uh, uh, downtown district boards and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that she could say, well, I'm even on the board of blah, 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 blah. And I have a real business and I have employees yes. and the ability to be able to say all those things, even though that's not what you wanted in the beginning. Or maybe you thought that's what you were supposed to want because that's what it looks like when you're a business owner. Right. I remember telling my mom over the phone, and I love my mom and she's very supportive, but sometimes there's a communication error. Error. 
I remember telling her like that we were officially a business, uh, that we were like licensed in the state of Florida and that we had like built this thing and we were very proud of it. And her reaction was like, yeah, but you don't, you don't like legitimately own a company. Like you don't have a brick and mortar location or employees. Right, right. You're not a real business. Right. You just yeah. have a piece of paper yeah. basically that says you're incorporated. And I remember feeling so deflated and even such that even after I've worked it out in my head over the years, if whenever we talk about like potentially hiring an assistant or in the future having an employee, there's this little voice in the back of my head that's like, my mom will finally take me seriously <laughs> if we hire someone. If we have an employee, like that's a game changer. And like having to stop and be like, what is that about? Right, right. <laughs> because I think that a lot of those choices that we make when it comes to doing something as freeing as being an artist, because what do we do? So we essentially work on the the biggest struggle that we have is working on the art that we're working on. That really should be the biggest struggle. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be marketing. A lot of people out there, I, I know that in a, on a lot of the videos that we post when I'm talking about marketing, one of the responses that I'll get from other artists is, learn, you know, take a marketing class. You don't know anything about marketing. Blah, 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 blah. And then I'll go because I'm who I am. So I'll stalk their page. And I'm like, you don't know anything about marketing either. You know, like, it's like there is this, this idea that you need to have the credentials in order to prove to other people that you are legitimized. Yeah. Right. So like, and that was one of the things that worked against us as artists to begin with, because back in the day, you weren't legitimized unless a gallery, uh, you were part of a gallery. Right. And that stigma sort of carries over even into today where you don't need a gallery. But like so many artists I know have joined galleries, myself included, for the status, you know, yep. and whether you really want to be there or not. Like I think I think it's hilarious. Like when I joined the the first co op gallery that I joined here in town, and your your parents, your family came to visit soon after, and your mom was standing in the gallery. And I remember at that point I was like looking at the gallery, and I kind of hated being there because it was a co op gallery. And I was like, I hate this place. And uh, your mom being there, and she's like, oh, you're you know, and your stepdad being like, yeah, you know, like you're in a big time now. You're serious because I had my artwork hanging in, in a, a gallery. gallery yeah and my mom was like these are all going to be very good talking points for thanksgiving dinner with the extended family yeah you exactly because i mean that was the thing it's like giving the talking points to other people um in the family to be able to prove the legitimacy of what it is that you're doing and i think a lot of that can easily guide us into making choices or at least seeing things a certain way mm -hmm. in our business that makes things way more serious and way more stressful than they actually need to be. I think it's 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 not very often, it should be more often, that we really investigate our motivations behind some of the choices that we make, the way that we decide to look at certain things, uh, even when it comes to time management or anything like that, because I have a feeling that we can easily, just out of out of practice, because... In society, what do you do? You go, you work somewhere, you hate your job, you retire, and then after you retire, you get to do what you actually wanted to do. Right. Right? And I think for a lot of us, uh, it's it's hard to quantify the fact that we are creative. So this is essentially what we love to do. Mm -hmm. we, we feel this innate uh, necessity to be able to do this thing that we do. We need to create. And because of that, a lot of people see it as a luxury, like they see it as, you know, a be this is just something that you do as a hobby. Like your entire life is a blow off class. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it, what's interesting here is that I want to make it very clear, like whether or not you're doing this on the side, you have a job and you're doing art to express yourself or whether or not you're deciding to do this as a full time uh, thing, they are both completely and utterly beneficial. To me, it's the same thing. I'm not saying that uh, you need to quit your job and just pursue art 
because that's also the other side of it, taking it really seriously. Well, you're not really a serious artist unless you're actually doing it full time. Right, right. Or you're not actually a serious artist unless you're in a gallery or you're not actually a real artist unless you're doing this. I think that there's all these like prerequisites that are out there that are completely and utterly ridiculous. Like you are creating art, you are an artist, whether or not you're doing it full time and this is what you do to support yourself or you have a job and this is what you're doing on the side, it's not really just a hobby. Art is not just a hobby. Art is a part of you, a part of your expression. So like, is it a serious thing? No, it's not a serious thing, but it is definitely part of your expression. It is part of your language. It is part of something that you want to do. And I think Anything else, when you infuse the work ideals behind that and say, like, I need to be taken seriously for what I do, that's where that's where things get a little clunky. Yeah, we're coming from a perspective of, and I think the simplicity of this topic is, uh, we've been doing this for a long time. For the most part, we've been having a lot of fun, but personally, we've allowed ourselves to spend a percentage of our time being stressed out, yeah. taking things seriously, and not fully enjoying it. And sure, you're going to come up against things that are challenging and stressful or whatever, but asking, take panning the camera back a little, and if I find myself saying like, well, this is like, this needs to be like this because I got to stay on this schedule, but I don't really feel happy about it, but this is just the way it is because I don't want to let this person down. Like, maybe, maybe that's not great. It's definitely not sustainable and it's definitely not good long-term practice. Yeah. And I think it stems from turning it into this very serious thing. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to get stuff done if you stop taking it so seriously. And what you were saying earlier is chances are you're going to get more stuff done if you stop being like, ha, ha, da, da, da. yeah, exactly. If you're not like pulled in, in like 70 different directions because you're like, well, I got to make sure that I blah, blah, and I got to make sure that I blah, blah, and I got to make sure that I do my marketing and on social media, I got to make sure that I post every day and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. you, like you do all these things that like, the directive behind it is this is what you do if you're a real business. Right. And it's not even necessarily changing what you do. You're just changing your perspective. And here's the real thing about like being an artist or an entrepreneur and not being at work per se, where you're like when five o'clock rolls around, you're done for the day, you switch that off and you go do what you want to. It's around you 24 seven. Right. For us, that's not the case for everybody. For us, the studio, the art, the work, the responsibilities, they're here 24-7. Right. So if you don't learn how to enjoy that process and not take yourself seriously, it's constantly there waiting for you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a job that you never get to leave if you turn it into a job that you don't like. Yeah. And and that's, that's the thing. Like you are either – uh, having a lifestyle where like, this is part of my lifestyle and you know what? I don't need to justify this to anyone. I don't need people to take me seriously. If people want to look at me and be like, oh, well, when are you going to get a real job? That's fine. That's their perspective. That's more reflection on how they're living their life. How can I live my life fully every single day? doing what I love and enjoying what I do because I know, I know that if I want more productivity, if I want more risk taking, if I want all those things that are essential to becoming successful, that I'm going to have to let go of all the stress and just play mm -hmm. as much as possible and put myself out there. Basically act like a five-year-old. You play and you put it out there. You play and you put it out there and people are going to reject you and people are going to say you suck and people are going to say you're amazing, but it doesn't matter because that doesn't have an impact on you. You're not worried about them taking you seriously as something you are just doing your thing and putting yourself out there as much as possible. Yeah. And so Rafi and I spent a few hours talking today instead of doing our podcast yep. schedule, which obviously we're podcasting right now yeah so we're still getting it done but he was like can you imagine if like you were the grouchy serious boss and like 
then another version of you was in here talking to me and you came in the room and you were like, those podcasts aren't going to record themselves. What do you think you're doing? (laughs) And realizing then for me, like, oh, I don't want to be a crappy boss to myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I certainly, if we did have an assistant or an employee, I certainly wouldn't want to be that way with someone else who was helping us. Right. I mean, I'm like, this is... You got to think of how counterintuitive that is for running a business to begin with, right? So like, you are your own boss, right? And if you're a shitty ass boss to yourself, Mm -hmm. right, you're not motivating yourself. No, not at all. So like, let's say that you've got four commissions that need to go out and you've got a deadline for next week and you've got whatever and your boss self is telling you like... You know what? You fucking you haven't done those commissions. You got to get those commissions done. And next week we got this going out. And then and then you got to meet with your stepfather because you, blah, 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 like all these things like there. It, it's just overwhelming and stressful. And for a, for a lot of us, because we're used to that kind of work environment, mm-hmm. we tend to treat ourselves the same way. Yeah, and I'm like, man, I can't wait till boss me decides to go home for the day so I can just have a moment. <laughs> Jeez. But boss me never goes home for the day unless I decide to switch it off. Yeah. And you you just have to remember, like, when it comes to it, like, it's you switch it off or you remind yourself that you are an artist, right? So what you do is you create. Mm-hmm. So you're not the standard normal job, you are more of like a fey realm, magical unicorn type of job that no one else in the world understands what actually happens there. They don't know the struggles. You can't relate to someone else because your struggles are completely different. Your struggles are more about insecurity when it comes to creating something and, and, and pushing past boundaries and doing things like that. It is not about uh, taxes. We got to do taxes Mm -hmm. because as a creative, we get to be innovative and figure out a way like, how can we make this fun? Why am I stressed out about this? I'm stressed out about this because I think I'm going to get in trouble. I'm stressed out about this because I don't know enough about it. Well, let me figure it out and let me have fun doing it. Yeah. There's things, there's things that you don't have to do them, but it's beneficial to do them. And taxes is a great example, Right. but it doesn't have to suck. And you do have permission to give yourself permission to have fun and everything realizing for myself, everything stressful, including deadlines are all things that I've put in place. Right. As you said, right. These are all things, protocols, schedules, deadlines, uh, all of it. We've put them in place. It was us. It wasn't anyone else. No one else is in here setting up schedules and deadlines and all these things. It was us. Yeah. So either, it's working for you and you're having fun or you're not having fun and it's not working and it's something to think about. Yeah. And I mean, and that's basically what we're saying in this podcast is like pay really close attention to some of the things that you might be stressed out about when it comes to your art, even when it comes down to like pricing your art. And I don't know enough about pricing my art and I need to like look this up and like maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I'm not. And other people chiming in and saying it's too expensive or you're not charging enough. And how much stress comes with that because you 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 start taking it way too seriously, not realizing that like you're the artist. You get to choose. You get to define what your prices are. You get to define what your deadlines are. You get to define what it is that you're going to do with the piece. You get to define what your refund policy is or whatever those things are. And yes, I do recommend to some extent, maybe if you're confused about something, do a little bit of research, but don't get caught up in the research and understand that all the research that you find out there When it comes to running a business, whether it is an art business or another business or doing marketing or any or, you know, product marketing or anything like that, all of that stuff is simply someone's opinion, whether it is the general opinion uh, out there of more than one someone's or it is one person's opinion. Even this podcast, this is my opinion based on our experience, based on the fact that like there are times that we've stressed out when we really didn't need to stress out. And in realizing that that stress and being stressed out in a creative business like that actually causes you 
to lose productivity, to lose opportunity, to lose that innovative thing that makes you who you are. And so like, if anything, this podcast is more of a keep your eyes open and make sure that you're not buying into the bullshit that society wants to tell you of what it means to be a real adult or a real artist or, or a real, real business person or a real business person and just subscribe to who it is that you are and what you want out of life because ultimately at the end that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, I think that was a, a good conclusion, a good summary <laughs> to what we were trying to say here. I am curious to know what your guys' thoughts are as far as taking yourself seriously as an artist or, uh, you know, like what your thoughts are on the whole subject of society and work and things like that, that, that actually be really interesting to find out from the perspective of artists themselves. And, uh, that's, that's it for the day. Thank you so much for listening. You guys, you guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you want to listen to more like this, just go ahead and click somewhere around here to subscribe. And that's it. You want to say goodbye, Clee? Good day. Adios. Adios.